everyone, my name is Usman Asim. I'm a PhD candidate at University of Sydney, Australia. Today I'm going to present our work on early identification of depression severity levels on Reddit using ordinal classification. This is a joint work with my PhD supervisors, Adam, Jinman, and Matlo Koshe. First, I will briefly talk about the motivation. User-generated text on social media is a promising venue for public health surveillance and has been actively explored for its feasibility in early identification of depression. Existing methods in the identification of depression have shown promising results. However, these methods are all focused on treating the identification as a binary classification problem. To be clinically useful, methods for identifying depression in social media users needs to be able to tell the difference between depression and severity levels. To date, there has been little effort towards identifying users' depression and severity levels and disregard inherent ordinal nature across the, these fine-grained levels. We can see here in the figure one that um, there is a, uh, in the posting history from a user, that um, there is, there is, we can categorize the depression uh, the post based on the dip, dip, different depression severity levels, uh, minimum, mild, moderate, and severe, and to be useful for uh, clinical interventions, uh, it, is, it has been identified that it is more useful instead of just identifying uh, the depression as a binary uh, uh, class problem. Previous studies, previous methods treated depression as a binary classification task, which is simplification of depression and limits the value for using the methods to identify people who use should be considered for clinical intervention. The first study considered by Lusada and Cristani carried out the first study to construct a depression severity level data set and demonstrated the usefulness of at-risk categorization over the number of depression severity levels. Rao et al. presented our hierarchical method that used BERT with attention based by GRU and achieved competitive performance for depression detection for binary tasks. Finally, the recent method by Zogan et al. presented an abstractive, extractive, automatic text summarization model for automatic depression detection by combining user behavior and user post history. Gaps in, in previous studies includes that previous methods cannot aid decisions about the priority of users with severe depression severity for clinical treatments because of their binary classification approach and existing methods treat all severity levels equally disregarding the natural ordinal nature between the severity levels. Contributions of this study includes that we reformulate depression identification as an ordinal classification problem to determine the inherent interclass relationship between depression severity levels and present an ordinal hierarchical attention based method for depression severity levels. We release a relabeled ready data set of 3553 posts from binary labeling to instead use four depression severity levels to better characterize user relative to potential prevention and treatment. We demonstrate that our method outperforms state-of-the-art methods on both data sets. Experiments using one or more posts from each user showed that including more than one post can provide a more accurate predictions of depression severity levels in users and that most accuracy gains are achieved within 10 posts. Methodology overview of our architecture the overall architecture of our proposed method is conceptualized in figure shown it consists of the representation layer bilistium with attention layer and the ordinal classification layer now we briefly talk about each layer in our method the first layer is representation layer representation layer leverages the global features using graph convolution neural network in this uh, layer, we used text graph convolution network, which is text GCN, to generate the post embeddings at our representation layer. Text GCN can represent a corpus as a heterogeneous graph, learn word and document embeddings with neural graph networks 
jointly and produce high classification results with only a small portion of labeled documents. We use the representation generated of the post at the representation layer for further processing. Bilistium with attention layer, we use Bilistium to record the temporal information across posts that models the post embedding in a sequential manner for each post posted by a user. The Bilistium transforms the historical post encoding into a contextual representation. And then we use attention layer. We present a temporal attention mechanism to account for the fact that the depression and the presence of depression associations vary from one user post to the next. This method models adoptive weights for contextual representation of each post, emphasizing and aggregating the post with indicators of depression severity levels. Ordinal classification layer. Motivated by previous studies, our method is trained by minimizing an ordinal regression loss to maintain the inherent ordering of severity levels. This ordinal loss is the same as cross entropy loss adopted by other depression identification methods that use all severity levels evenly. Here we use probability distribution in addition to the classification score to calculate the cross entropy loss alternate of employing one hot vector representation of ground truth as different increases between the severity levels and the true severity levels the probability drops for associated severity levels refer to the figure number three we calculate the cross entropy loss using the classification score after calculating the probability distribution for the ground truth level as given the loss function n is the base level and lambda is the number of severity levels which is 4 in our case the cost function phi is a pre-computed inter-class cost uh, penalizing the predictions for from true severity levels for experiments uh, in the data we use two real world ready data sets with the different number of posts to identify depression severity levels we constructed one of the depression severity data sets D1, which contains only one post per user, and used eRISC as our second data set D2, which contains more than one post per user. The statistics of both data sets are given in table one. D1, for D1, we augmented a binary class publicly available ready data set presented by Turkin and McGoin. Each post was annotated by separately by two annotators using depressive DDA scheme, which is developed using six clinical resources and further categorized into one of four depression severity levels. That is minimal depression, mild depression, moderate depression, and severe depression. For D2, we used EORISC, a publicly available data set labeled across four depression severity levels using BDI depression and criteria to detect the existence of depression and identity, uh, identify its severity level in social media posts. For baselines comparison, we compared our results with existing state-of-the-art methods. We used traditional methods, graph-based methods, and deep learning-based methods. For traditionals, we extracted different language features, which are fit to the different machine learning classifiers. For graph-based methods, we use text GCN and trans text tensor GCN and fed as a linear classifiers. For deep learning-based methods, we use different transformer-based language models are used to generate language features and then let uh, fed to different deep learning-based classifiers. We have also used a uh, recent method depression net, which is used, um, which is proposed to identify depression on social media using historical uh, uh, posts. For evaluation, we used the matrix used in the previous similar works on the assessment of severity of suicide risk, where the authors changed the false positive and false negative formulas. False negatives is altered as the proportion of the number of times predicted depression severity level is lower than the actual risk level over the size of tested data. False positive is the proportion of the number of times the predicted risk is higher compared to the actual risk. Since the numerators of false positive and false negative in, involves comparison between uh, predicted and actual depression levels, we term the matrix as the graded precision and graded recall. 
So we use graded precision and graded recall and graded F1 score to, to, to evaluate our uh, performance, the performance of proposed model compared to the baselines. For results, we performed extensive experiments to compare the performance of a method compared to the baselines. For overall comparison, we compared our results with existing state-of-the-art methods. In the table three, we can see that our uh, methods outperformed all traditional graph-based and deep learning based baselines on both data D1 and D2. Uh, we can see that our method outperforms others, including TensorGCN, plus PyLSTM, and recently proposed depression net due to their ability to capture high severity levels of depression attributed using ordinal laws, which penalize the predictions based on how far the predicted severity level is from the actual severity level, which is treated equally in the baselines in case of misclassification. We further evaluated the performance of proposed method with postwise comparisons uh, on D2, since D1 only contains one post per user. So we can see in the figure four that um, uh, we observed that the performance of bylist TM plus tensor GCN, which is the uh, second best method, increases slightly, ranging from 70% to 76% when tested on first 25 posts and reaches maximum performance of F score of 86% when tested on first 200 posts. In contrast, the performance of our method remains consistent. Further, for early identification and clinical intervention of, clini of at-risk users with severe depression, we observe that our method requires only 10 posts to predict at-risk users with severe depression with an F-score of 95%. Please refer to the figure number five. These results demonstrate that our method requires a minimum of 10 posts to correctly identify overall depression severity levels and at-risk users with severe depression for early clinical intervention compared to the state-of-the-art baselines. These results reflect the importance of one of the, our contribution that reformulating depression identification as an ordinal classification task. For analysis, we compared, we performed a number of analyses to demonstrate the effectiveness of our method. In the ablation analysis, figure number seven, we demonstrated the results of ablation analysis that we conducted to determine the performance of each uh, of our methods module. We extend the base model by including sequential temporal attention and ordinal module. The base model uses embeddings generated by text GCN of the post compared to the base model, uh, which is text GCN sequential model shows the improvement due to an LSTM to capture the representation for temporal patterns from post. With addition of the temporal attention layer, we observe that the method's performance improves, possibly because it can identify specific posts more relevant for the severity level Finally, employing relative severity levels, we find that our method has increased the predictive performance. In addition, we performed uh, we um, uh, uh, performed comparisons of adding cross entropy with the or replacing cross entropy in baselines with ordinal loss, and we can see that uh, the adding uh, replacing cross entropy with the ordinal loss in the baselines improved the performance. And secondly, in figure six, we have performed transportability test where we train on one data set and test it on other data set. We can see that the proposed model outperforms all other baselines in our transportability test as well. This transportability test uh, also validates the robustness of our method. In the conclusion, we reformulated an early identification of depression as an ordinal classification problem based on fine-grained severity levels of depression on social media. From a broader perspective, ordinal classification addresses the classification problem for depression identification where not all incorrect severity levels are equally incorrect. The implication of this work includes the potential to improve public health surveillance and other health applications that rely on automatically identifying depression on social media at scale. Thanks for your time. If you have any question, please uh, ask me. And for more details, please refer to our paper. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Uh, do we have questions? I have uh, 
two questions, if I may. Yeah, sure, Ibrahim. Right. Sure. So th thanks a lot again. It was great. Uh, first, I, I'm, I think I missed it, but you chose only a single post per user. That's right? No, no, no. We have two uh, data sets. Uh, the first data set is, has one post per user, and second data set has multiple historical posts per user. Okay. That's so how... why. Yeah, you want? Yeah, so how did you choose the single for, for the single post data set? How did you choose the single one? So yeah, there was a one data set already available publicly and we read label that one as according to the uh, one uh, uh, depression DDA, one scheme available and we relabel that one according to depression severity. Okay, mm. that depression severity does not depend on the oh, historical post. It depends on what user is writing based on its uh, the, the keywords uh, found according to the scheme we used. I see. Okay. And second question, if I may, what the, uh, you, you use two annotators, right? To to annotate your data set. Yeah. Um, were there a high agreement between them in terms of? Yes. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we 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 went through a very um, uh, how should I say? Uh, restricted or not restricted actually uh, uh, because the the quality of annotation was required and that's why we went through this process that we've been through multiple iterations and our our inter annotation score was i think 80 80 plus uh, cool. in the first uh, few samples so that, Cup, that's couple score we, of 80, 80 plus yeah yeah yeah, couple score, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yeah, score, yeah. Right. so uh, we we had a couple of meetings everyone was online we just started with the some samples so make sure that everyone is online, uh, aligned with each other. They understand the, the 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 instructions. They understand that which one to consider that one. So that's why we 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 uh, achieve the high score of uh, Kappa score. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And this data set is also publicly available. Yeah, I, I will use it. <laughs> <laughs> it our papers. Thank you. I will. Great. Um, I also have a question. You performed the transferability test and showed that your, yes. your model is yeah, very yeah. robust. Can you provide us with some insight on in, or so, intuition yeah, this why is, this, this happens? Because this was kind of doubled the results, right? So uh, compared no, to the other. It, it doubled or it, it decreased actually. It decreased, right? The, the results in the transportability uh, decreased as compared to the main results. Uh, and it, 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 it's supposed to because our training and test set set is different. In the transportability, what we are doing, we are training on one D1, which contains only one post per user. And then we're testing it on, on another data set, then the new data set, which contains historical post, uh, which is labeled by another approach, right? Uh, both labeling techniques are different. And in the other way, we did D training on D2, which contains historical posts and labeled by another approach. Uh, and then we test it on D1. So that's why we did the uh, transfer transferability test or transportability test is just the name. Uh, so that, that's, uh, that's the purpose of just checking the robustness uh, of the or generalizability of the models compared to the baselines. Okay. 